<laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker as I take on all of the heavy machinery in Ireland apparently. <laughs> I am happy to be back on this bike. <laughs> oh man, I absolutely love this thing. Like probably probably too much if I'm if I'm honest. Just have to set up my idle because I did I did adjustments since I've been home to uh to you know get everything kind of na nailed in. I still have to like turn back off. Oh my god, I absolutely love this thing. <laughs> I still have to turn back off the um, gear change light thing that comes on at 6,000 RPM. I'll show it to you in a minute. Uh, there you go. That's it. Uh, so I also have a, like a lot of little bits to do on the bike, but I'll, I'll talk about them more when I stop. The whole reason behind this bike, uh, this bike, <laughs> I'm an idiot, this video is why did I buy a 2000 Aprilia Falco or SL1000 Falco and that, that's been the question I've been asked actually quite a bit and I mean other than this <laughs> mm, tasty B-twin goodness yeah other than that um, I mean there are a few more oh that is absolutely intoxicating there are a few more reasons which we'll go through during the video but you know, there's been there's been an absolute rake of questions like why a Falco, why from Germany, why in winter. Um, there's just there's just a lot of there's a lot of people confused about my decision making. And here's the beauty of my decision making: it doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> because oh, oh, oh my God! Oh, I absolutely love this boy. Um, my, my decision making doesn't make any sense. It won't make any sense because it's nonsensical and You know, that's okay because Not everything has to make sense in life. Not everything has to be for a financially sensible reason. Not everything has to be like approached, you know from a corporate leadership level of sense um, oh, this is Just absolutely I mean, other than how this thing rides, which is absolutely beautifully, that should be enough of a reason, to be honest, for absolutely anyone. Um, but yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep getting distracted with this bike because uh, it's the first day I have it back out in the road uh, since my ride home. And what's really cool is, you know, you think you'd be almost after like kind of forgetting a bike, but I spent so much time with this bike already. Um, Honestly, jumping on it and taking it for a ride is like second nature. It just feels so good. That is a lot of dirt on the road. Christ. Um, and where I'm going is if you watched uh, the first ride when I was back on the Jixer many, many moons ago, we're going up those hills um, just because I like those roads. There's good views up there and, you know, I get to ride the bike up on some, some nice roads. But yes, why I bought it. So, first and foremost, um, I think the last, you know, the last two years uh, with the, with the the spicy cough, as my buddy Hachui is calling it, uh, or Chewy picks on Instagram, um, and get well soon, by the way, bud. But anyway, yes, right. So due to the spicy cough, the last two years I had loads of plans, loads of ideas that I wanted to kind of do. When I started the channel, which was part of why I started the channel, I was like, if I'm doing these, why not record them? Why not show people what I'm doing, right? So that was that was part of that. And I just kind of never got to do a lot of them um, for all of those reasons, which which sucked a little bit. But, you know, I was I love that view. I always love that view. Um, I, I just didn't want to forget about them and not do them. Um, you know, like I have... Oh, look at that. Beautiful, eh? But I have another trip coming up in April with some buddies. We're going to Snowdonia. And that's another one that I've wanted to do for a long, long, long time. So, um, you know, it's just kind of like, now that I have the opportunity to do them, I'm going to do them. Because I've said it many, many times um, 
you know, things change very quickly in life and, you know, you never know what might stop you being able to do something that you wanted to do, something cool that you planned on doing. And I don't want to, I don't want to, to regret that. So obviously for, for travel restriction reasons, I wasn't able to do a lot of things and we still got Scotland done, which was another kind of a bucket list thing for me. So that was cool. Um, but I just, there was, you know, I wanted to buy a bike in Europe and ride it back. Uh, Germany was kind of top of my list for many reasons. Um, you know, they, they kind of keep their bikes well over there. I've been to Germany a lot for work, so I was familiar with public transport. Um, I was familiar with, I was just kind of familiar, actually, and where I bought the bike, uh, it was an area that I used to work in a lot. So I was very familiar with the area and, you know, kind of how people act up there. And they're all pretty, pretty reasonably sound people. So that did play into the decision as well. And then why the Falco? So I have wanted a V-Twin for a long time. Uh, well, since long before I started the channel, I have wanted a V-Twin. It's just something that kind of was in my head as a, they're, they're, look, they're just a cool engine. And one of the bikes that I, uh, well, multiples of the bikes that I really like um, is the likes of the SP1, the SP2, Hondas. Uh, obviously, both of which are out of my price range a bit. So I was then looking at the VTR. But the thing about the VTR, and the VTR is a cool bike, don't get me wrong. The only thing that kind of put me off the VTR was the fact that you know, in stock form, it's pretty basic. Um, you know, you don't have... There's just not much with it, and the suspension is known to be pretty pretty crappy, even if, even if it was rebuilt, say. Um, you know, the Falco has more power, it has a better stock suspension setup. Now, I know the shock is arguably just as bad, but when you have someone like Dean, who's willing to rebuild stuff and set them up for you, the better the starting base point you can get, kind of the, the better all around. So. That, that played into my decision um, was, you know, what, what was kind of a good option that way. And obviously, you know, I have fully adjustable uh, uh, front forks, which with, with a bit of a, a, I don't know actually do they have compression, I'm not sure. They have rebound, they have preload, which is, is more than the, the VTR has. So that did play into my decision. And we'll, we'll have a look when we stop, but the looks so the kind of three bikes I had in my head was, and someone nearly guessed one one of them was a Suzuki TL1000 or RS I wasn't going to be picky another one was the VTR and I actually messaged a couple of sellers about VTRs and then obviously this Falco and I messaged three sellers about Falcos uh, two of them were just didn't really respond to uh, a w in a way that I, I thought they sounded honest so I put them in the bin and then uh, dip old motor rad or dip old racing in Untersemau in Germany they responded and they were open helpful interested in the project so they got they got my money <laughs> basically and look it, it, the bike isn't without its problems I'm not saying I struck it lucky and had the best dealer in the in world history you know there's there's a couple of bits that need to be done on the bike but i expected that i didn't i didn't think i was going out to buy a bike that everything was done on and to be honest uh, if you watch the channel i probably would have been disappointed with that i'm glad we're going this way because that road's filthy let's do a little pull ah this bike is so angry <laughs> I still have my warped brake discs on here, so they feel a bit crappy, but hey ho. This is why I came up this way. This road is uh, absolutely delicious. <laughs> but anyway, right? So that, that was kind of what played into it. Is At first I was looking at a bike that I just planned on bringing back to Ireland, cleaning up and selling. And then, uh, like I said in previous videos, I decided against that and that put me on to, well, buy one that you want to keep. now. Again, if you've been watching the channel for a while, I have a thing about, like, I have a fondness for rare, underappreciated bikes, and 
I mean, everyone knows the Mille and the RSV Tuano, so the, the V60 degree V twins. Everyone kind of knows they're good bikes. The Falco flew under the radar a bit more. It's kind of between the Mille and the uh, the Tuano. The Tuano having the you know the upright bars and whatever else. So, I mean, the Tuano probably would have been a more sensible decision for me, more comfortable. But the Falco still has again. Look at that view. I get. Do I really need to explain why I came this road? I, I, I think not, good sir. Um, but you know, this was this is the kind of the in between model, and despite my tallness, I do have delusions of grandeur, or maybe not grandeur, delusions of shorter that I am actually smaller than I am, and um, I never, for instance, you know, people always ask me to take photos of myself on the bikes, and I hate, hate doing it. Because I don't care what I look like on a bike, right? Hello, doggy. Uh, hello, doggy. Two doggies. <laughs> um, I don't care what I look like on a bike, but it's kind of unavoidable if you take a picture that you don't have to edit and upload for people to look at and comment on. And that kind of sucks a bit, I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, I'm not immune to criticism. I'm not immune to comments on my size and weight and whatever else. Uh, I'm a lot better at ignoring them than most, but I'm not immune. This bike is class. Now, there is a couple of, like I said, there's a couple of issues with the bike. We'll go through them when we stop. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna try to stop repeating that. Um, but you know, overall, I am exceptionally happy with my decision to buy this. Because one of the, the largest reasons that kind of sold me on the Falco is, you know, I was looking at pictures of, because the TL1000s were just kind of out of my price range, okay? To get that out there, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that, oh, you know, I just I picked the Falco because I only wanted the Falco. That would be a lie. I, I was solidly happy with um, any of the three, but then what I ended up doing was putting the Falco beside the VTR in photos, just put them up beside each other. And every single time I thought the Falco was a far better looking bike, a far more interesting bike. Now I know that's going to be, why are you doing this? Why are you driving through all the stones? You know, that's going to upset some people. I'm sure there's VTR lovers out there. Oh, okay, so loads of your lights aren't working. You have a 212 Jeep, but you can't get your trailer lights working. I'm not trying to upset people who are VTR lovers or aficionados. I'm just explaining my decision. I put the two bikes beside each other, and I thought the Aprilia looked a lot better. Oh, no. Honestly, it's addictive. <laughs> But anyway, right, so I put them beside each other, I decided I much prefer the looks of the Aprilia. And as I said, I, I have I have long been a fan of Aprilia. I love I love how Aprilia the company came about. I love how they're they're kind of up there with the big hitters now. I mean like an RSV4 is is a bloody desirable bike. You know, a V4 Tuano is a is a very desirable bike. They just released the Torag, uh, the Tuarag, however you pronounce it, we're gonna say Torag. Um even though it's definitely not a tow rag of a bike, it's beautiful and nice looking. It's good and good and hefty. And uh, my buddy Pete, aka Hippo Drones, just bought one, so go give him a follow on YouTube and Instagram if you want to see more of the Aprilia. Um, now we're getting lots of energy from these boys today. Go on, do your big spins. Fair play to you. Still not buying an electric car though. And you know, one thing that I will be talking about soon is, you know, why you don't need to go buy a fancy new bike. And that was all, that also kind of played into it because I, I wanted to buy a fancy new bike. Anyway, but back to it, I, I love Aprilius, okay? I love the looks of them, I love the company, so that did also play into my decision. Um, and you know, this V-Twin sounds fantastic. I knew it sounded fantastic when I bought it. Class. Um, so that also played into my decision. Now we're gonna just go over this crest and come back and park there. I can't skip this road. No, it's not allowed. It's illegal. It's illegal to skip this section of road. Because there's a nice view up here. Jump. View. And view. So we shall slow down for said view. Uh, isn't, isn't it? I have to say, for all Ireland's faults, and it has many of them. Cows. Hello. Uh, it is a beautiful country, absolutely beautiful one. It's not raining, but it is, it is a beautiful country, and that's a nice view. 
and people who live up here are very lucky oh look at the sunshine breaking through the clouds over there that's cool <laughs> just and over there oh wow if i had my good camera with me that would be a nice photo but i don't so we won't we won't worry about that now i'm turning down here It's a lot windier coming back this way. I suppose that's why the wind turbines are facing that way. <laughs> yeah, hopefully with its new battery and all that, it starts again later. <laughs> if, if not, I'll have a fun time running the bumps out up here, let me, let me tell you. Um, so yeah, that's kind of partly why I bought it, you know, for the Aprilia. Wanted a V-twin, I wanted to buy it in Europe somewhere in Germany, just happened to be the best place that made most sense to me. And I mean, look at it. Look, do you know, squatty boy. Look at, look at that thing. Mm, it's a tasty bike. It is a, a really tasty bike. Still want to change the exhaust. So yeah, let's run through, I suppose, a couple of things. I want to change the exhaust. I want to do that. I'm considering repainting it because some of the plastics have little scuff marks on them and stuff. So I might just do the tank and the rear fairings. The front fairings are actually okay. And so is the front mud guard. Um, other things that need doing. Obviously, I just changed the battery and I just changed the spark plugs. That's what was wrong with it not running, I think it was the spark plugs. And I also just put a brand new K&N air filter into it. Other things that I have for it, I have brand new brake discs and pads. Um, those brake discs are warped, I did check them. They're a bit warpy pooed. Uh, other things I have coming, a couple of things from AP, uh, AP Workshop in England, uh, battery cables, um, because the old ones are apparently not good and I just want to make sure the charging system is as good as it can be. Um, I also have new chain and sprockets for, for the bike because those ones are, the, the sprocket actually, I think it's the original one on it, uh, which is obviously not good. Um, and I had to buy new carrier studs because when I inspected the bike when I got it home, I noticed two of the studs were not original. So you can see actually the two that aren't original right there. Um, I did take them off and check them, made sure they were doing their job. They are, but it looks like someone stripped them before and then re retreaded instead of putting on a new stud or whatever else, just retreaded and put in different bolts. Runs fine, feels fine. It came the whole way home from Germany like that, but I'm not going to leave it like that. Um, Dean from Automax Suspension is going to get it, and he's going to redo the forks and rear shock and set the bike up for me. Uh, honestly, like I said, it's one of the first things I want to do to any bike I get from now on is suspension because it just makes it feel so much better. It's not bad, it's not bad for me, but it makes it feel a lot better. Um, I want to get a new screen because this one's original and it's just cracked and stuff from sun, I imagine. It's just not the best looking thing in the world. So I'd like to change that. And uh, yeah, but uh, the, one of the huge things about this was I wanted to show that you don't have to go and spend a big ball of money on a brand new bike uh, to enjoy it because and by the way there is absolutely nothing wrong with spending a big ball of money on a really nice bike i would do it if i could um, and some of my friends can do that and fair play to them i wish i could do it uh, but for those of us who can't do that there are still fantastic options out there that you can go on an adventure and, and do and you should hopefully have my my total cost of getting this back to Ireland up on YouTube by now. Um, obviously, I didn't tell you the price of the bike because I don't want to, so <laughs> tough. It was it was a lot cheaper than in Ireland, and overall I did save a little bit of money uh, buying it from Germany. Not a lot, I could have bought one and had it home for, you know, reasonably close amount, within a thousand euro, basically. Um, but you can do that, and the thing about it is, the money I spent getting the bike home, it's not, money on a bike for me that was that was a trip that was something i'll remember that was fun um, so yeah i also have new braided brake lines front and back of course another thing i always like to do i'm going to pop out the pistons out of the brake calipers and have a look at them and make sure they're okay and put them back in it's apparently very difficult to get actual service kits for the brembo brakes unfortunately um so hopefully all the seals and stuff are good and yeah that's kind of it so i mean i hope that answered some of the questions uh, that people had about why I bought this. If it didn't cover everything, please do let me know in the comments and I will try clarify anything. But just a quick, that was definitely a very long video on kind of why I bought it. It was just, I wanted a trip. I wanted a V-twin um, and I wanted to not spend a huge amount of money on it. So that was kind of, I really hit two, two fairly big 
birds with that one stone is is you know i got a big big trip in a trip of a lifetime in a, in a way you know i might never get to do it again hopefully i will but in a way it was a trip of a lifetime and uh i also got a really nice v-twin out of it so you know let's see how this goes for me over the coming years um i have already decided this is going to stay with me for a while someone already did ask me was i willing would i be willing to sell it when i have it fixed up um because i think they want me to do all the little bits on it i mean look if you really want it and want to make me an offer it might fund my next trip so we'll see i can i can enjoy it for a while but um definitely first all the brake discs are being done um you know brake lines suspension it's it's this is gonna be tidied and i, I want to bring it up on a track day uh, when it's finished so that'll be fun too but yes, if you've watched, thank you very much for watching uh, up here with this lovely view and big old winter winds. Imagine that unhinged right now. Okay, that would be absolutely terrifying. Okay, now I have an unreasonable fear of that thing just breaking off and careening towards me. I would not get away. I'd be dead. I'd be really, really dead. <laughs> That's a fact. Um, but yes, if you watch, thank you very much for watching. As always, a very special thank you to my patrons. Um, I massively appreciate your support. And there's a few new ones who've joined on there recently and thank you very much for joining. Again, massively, massively appreciate it. And uh, not sure why, why you think it's worth uh, supporting the channel, but I do appreciate it a lot, every day. I'm gonna close this and hopefully the sound is better because it's really windy right here. Oh, it's really cold up here actually. I shouldn't have taken off my gloves. But yes, until next time, thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoy this pretty amazing view up here. Adios. Outro crew if i was to decide to paint the bike what color combination would you use i am thinking i'm thinking it'd have to be orange and black or black and gold because those are my two kind of favorite color combos but you you outro crew you let me know what do you think i i do think they'd be nice though i do think they'd be nice you know even the accents of the brembo kind of go that gold and then black, but then I have the silver to frame. Mm, it's a tough one, it's a tough one. And obviously you have the red and green accents of Aprilia, uh, which is why I went with red carbon um, brake lines to kind of accent out the red and the four caps. Yeah, let me know outro crew, and thank you for watching this fair, as always, your legends, bye.